Hello there, this is Sandhya and welcome to Dynamic Living. All of us at Discover GPS. I'm Ashwara, I'm the founder of Global Beauty Secrets. All of us at Discover GPS have been truly, truly inspired to um, celebrate this entire Valentine's week. Um, you know, talking about better self-care rituals so that, you know, we reflect on the many, many ways that we can express love to ourselves. And uh, keeping that in perspective, I thought the perfect guest for today would be Sandhya Krishnan. Sandhya Krishnan is someone whom we got in touch with um, uh, in May, back in May. Uh, when, you know, the entire COVID thing uh, had really scared people off. And, uh, you know, uh, so she's here. I'm just adding her. Uh, the really scared people. And, you know, we wanted to encourage people to take care of their mental health and wellness. That is when we got uh, in touch with Sandhya. And she was really, really supportive of this entire initiative. Um, and uh, hi, Sandhya. Hi, hi, Ashwarya. Nice to be connected <laughs> again. Same here. So, you know, I was just uh, telling our audience about um, who you are and what you do. And uh, now that you're here, um, you know, l let me just hand it over to you so that you can introduce yourself and tell us more about your purpose. Okay, thank you so much. Hello, everybody. I'm Sandhya Krishnan. I'm a wellness coach. And I like to work with young professionals, students, uh, entrepreneurs, help themselves, help them find their true purpose, realize their true potential and find mindfulness and therefore the best of productivity, the best of where they can go. Right. So why wellness? Because wellness incorporates not just body, but also our mind, our relationships, our financial, our relationship with money, but also our larger sense of purpose. And um, without, if we sort of let drop the ball on any one of these, sort of the whole, the whole castle comes crashing down. So for that reason, I love uh, working with Discover GBS. I love what you guys stand for uh, and, and this whole sense of taking care of yourself and well-being. And um, thank you for having me here today. So glad to. So um, you should also tell them, Sandhya, about how a um, person you have defeated TB and how you've overcome it and uh, how you've made it your life purpose to sort of educate people. Wh why, why have you actually been inspired to take to wellness at all? Tell us about your life journey a little bit more because it is something that, that I have been personally inspired by. I, I remember I was just telling them about how we got in touch with you and me. And then, you know, you did this small life for us during the quarantine uh, of which uh, I was an active um, a viewer and audience. And I was really, really impressed by what, uh, you know, uh, with your entire talk on health and wellness and how you had uh, fought such a deadly disease. So uh, I think that is the reason why I really wanted you to be a part of this conversation that we were having on self-care rituals at all. So please, please tell our audience about your entire journey. Uh, the journey of wellness, well, I'll let, let, me, let me tell you what's, what was different for me, right? Uh, we typically yeah. expect that TB will happen to a certain demographic of the population. We think it's somebody who doesn't take care of themselves and who's just, uh, you know, ignoring their health and suddenly TB happens or, you know, we don't know how it happens. Uh, this happened to me in 2011 and it was a time when there actually wasn't a lot of awareness about TB to start with. But also... The, the point that I want to make was that I was a busy professional. I was a mother. Um, I was also in good physical health. I was working out rigorously like four times a week. I was not overweight. So I thought, you know, you kind of feel like you're invincible at that time. And you're going like 14, 15 hours a day. Uh, in fact, I had, I had a colleague who would work late into the night with me. Turns out he was the one who had TB and I probably contracted it from him. But equally, that all of us probably have been exposed to TB, especially those of us living in India, which has also held us in good stead in today's COVID world. But what made me contract it, despite being in good physical health and, and having good nutrition, was my 
was the level of stress in my body and was me just not listening to my to the signals of my body right and that's why i said earlier that that we can't really if we want to go ahead in our lives if we want to realize our potential and today science tells us that we're going to live to 80 90 100 110 <laughs> so if we do have to live these long lives then we can't afford to let the ball drop on any one of these aspects right because that's the part that's that's the weak link that will come back and get you so was i already yeah was i like really unfit and then became super fit after tb no i i already was that but what my big realization was exactly this that we have to take care of all aspects of our life if we want to live a truly fulfilled happy satisfied but also productive life that's 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 true and i also remember this uh, another thing that you told me that you know why you always make it a, po- a point to sort of keep yourself groomed and you know you take that effort to dress up every day it's about you know uh, turning up to the world but turning up as a perfect package and you know just packaging yourself in a much better way when you turn up and uh, for me that was personally so inspiring so anyways my point was that your talk was really influential thank you thank you so much i'll just clarify that the package is anything but perfect um there's plenty you have to just see all the lights shining in my face and you know all the all the uh, chaos that there is around me but really it is that 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 for this invitation here i would like to bring the self of me that's centered and that's presented as pleasantly as i can without you know like breaking your head over it and worrying about the outcome of how it's going to be perceived and that being the crucial point <laughs> that's amazing i think that is thing um uh, that for me especially given that i am i keep losing my balance all the time because i am ambitious like that and i i always have like so much going on in my life and um i think that is something i would definitely take away from this talk <laughs> so it's like the storms can happen all around us but the center of us is ever at peace and can never be still so <laughs> wow <laughs> so uh, yeah you know today's activity about gratitude journaling um i'm really excited about that uh why do you think it's even necessary because you know like okay i know what i am thankful for or maybe i'm not thankful for anything at all in my life so and and i'm not talking about personally but i'm just saying generally right like uh i'm talking on behalf of our viewers here i'm sorry to take that away from you guys but you know like what if what why why gratitude journaling why do you think it's important at all uh so let me give you so we we've all heard about you know how how gratitude is so important and how it's there are several spiritual contexts to gratitude as well almost every philosophy and religion talks about gratitude in one way or the other uh, which mm-hmm. seems to be like a sense of how you can become a bigger person than where you were right now people like me we feel the need to question everything and i hope that and i and i do believe there might be uh, uh, people in the audience as well who are saying that yeah okay you know i mean we see on instagram there are these gorgeous people with their gorgeous journals and their writing and you know and they feel all beat to fake and but but somehow it doesn't seem to ring very true for us <laughs> in our everyday busy lives especially when things are stressful right if somebody says i remember specifically i had a client who said please don't tell me to sit down and then take take and deep breaths and tell tell me all the things i'm grateful for i want to murder somebody right now so where do you i mean if that's if that's where a lot of us are at right? and and lockdown and work from home has been particularly stressful for us then why should we make time to do one more to do on our list and why are we you know why are we even saying that listen guys we know you're really busy but please can you do this one thing it could really help so there is a lot of science behind all of this there's several studies let's mm-hmm. talk about you mentioned that you know the things that you're grateful for right ashwarya but the thing is at this moment you're remembering it but we have something called hedonic adaptation which is that you know as a our, our very primitive brain um our brain by the way is still quite primitive um but what little we know is that our brain has a tendency to kind of get used to or or forget about all the good things in our life 
everything good mm-hmm. like like oh my god yesterday there so you have seen this so often you've bought a new outfit or you've bought a new lipstick within within a few hours the thrill of that is gone right or or even if even if you get like a new car or even a new house if you see a year six months later if you say oh my god i have a new house i have a, you know i mean be like oh okay what what was i getting so thrilled about um unfortunately this is true even of things that we think might be far more important like marriage and relationship and baby career raise pay hike promotion all of these things which is not to say they're not important at all not for a minute it's just that our brain gets very used to all of the good things and it's for a very good reason as well imagine that we are cave people and if we had to sit and think about all the wonderful things oh i ate such a beautiful blueberry yesterday i'm going to be thinking about that blueberry now your stomach is getting hungry right now there is a tiger outside your cave i mean your brain would be much better off thinking about all the threats that that you have encountered in the past to prepare you for the threats that you will face in the future all the potential anxieties of the future so all these joyful thoughts of happy blueberries must quickly be forgotten and we must focus instead on all the possible threats that we have so this is the nature of our brain and of course in today's time there are very very palpable threats all around us right not just of a virus but also the potential of job loss life loss and we are seeing loss and pain all around us and for good reason our brain is going to focus on that and what we what we do again and again is what we get really good at and this becomes like a self feeding uh, model right uh, we also have something called the default mode network in our brain which is that you know when you're like just it's called brain brain wandering um mind wandering when you're just sitting down and you sort of like glaze over and your thoughts are just like skimming one by one in your head it's literally like your laptop has gone on to standby mode and is now going to scan for viruses there might be like the odd blueberry happy blueberry that will come but by and large our only job is to look for the viruses potential threats and and also all the narrative that creates this petty me right see sandhya yesterday you shouldn't have said this to that person see now you've made an enemy tomorrow you're going to go and make two more enemies so all of this narrative that sort of keeps us in this most safe possible mode but also in you know we're kind of like looking for anything that can cause right. us harm so we need to kind of so partly yes yeah go ahead i heard for negative voice and basically uh, this will help us transform that negative voice into a positive vo- voice is is that what you're saying uh yes and yes but again the question that 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 a cynic would ask is why should i be positive you know isn't it good for me to be negative shouldn't i be looking out for the threats right this sort of we don't we're not actually facing tigers today yes we know that covid is there we know that we've assessed the risk now we know that there are you know experts working on it but this constant rumination of the mind has devastating impacts on our body on our well-being on our focus on our productivity okay, on also, our relationships everything yeah so also it's taxing right to be living with this poison inside you like it poison is the right word right it is truly toxic absolutely absolutely and 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 quite literally as well this is ravaging our bodies this is ravaging our minds and and studies have shown us that that when there are experiments where people have shifted from that extreme negative thinking or these negative cycles of thinking what we call rumination when we shift to a more positive mindset where we need to actively remind ourselves of the things that we have of the gratitude that we have it results in in so much better well-being happiness but also better health better sleep better relationships and and your whole outlook towards life becomes more optimistic right you feel capable of taking on so much more your mind is able to scan to say okay i lost this job but this might be the best time ever for me to start that business i've always wanted to even be able to see that potential to see that alternative your brain has to be in that mode of rest and digest which we can only do when we are calm and when we when we feel that sense of abundance rather than that sense of threat right right so there are some questions that are coming through from veg basket 
them out again uh guys if you have any question and answers please feel free to put it in the question box below we'll definitely address it um after this activity so sandhya since you have explained the importance of this activity let's just do it live for all our viewers here right okay. and while you do it on the journal i'm going to do it in the comment box below so that people you know can simultaneously see it fabulous um, idea i would like to say that that don't let instagram and instagrammers uh, uh don't you or, or in any way journaling can be very simple it's literally us just slowing down our thoughts consciously scanning for uh, so so i love this particular definition of uh, gratitude there's one one thing is showing showing like a sense of thanks for something that you may have received it could be love it could be material things but another way of defining gratitude is simply showing appreciation for the things that you value and that are important to you so it doesn't have to be about anything so great like you can say oh my god nothing good happened to me today or you can say you know what i i'm so grateful that today my health is okay it's it's for your just your state of being you know i'm so grateful for the for the coffee that i got this evening which i had to make myself and i had to wash my own dishes yes 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 but that moment of enjoyment right we need to capture those moments so i'm going to do and again all these beautiful journals there are lovely journals that are available with beautiful prompts and daily messages but honestly you need nothing very much i use like a like a free diary that i got at a conference i do use a fountain pen this is my personal preference and i will explain why writing can be quite powerful one it's tactile the act of putting pen to paper and in my case with a fountain pen it's going to sound quite scratchy as well all of these are certain associations that you make to start with but also the act of writing forces you to slow down your thinking which you need to do when you're not in a state of threat uh it also helps you activate certain parts of your brain that that relate to language that relate to working memory and that relate to healing even so so i'll urge you to actually pick up a pen you don't need to invest in anything fancy but if you're a pen lover this might be the best time to sort of i just have i think mine's like a camel or a parker or something nothing very fancy again and i'm going to write down you can write like just one two or three things that you were grateful for in your day or in your week so we'll go to the nitty gritties of it after now let's not think too much think of anything nice that happened in your day today or in your week and just write down but also the things that that you're appreciative of right i'm so grateful for dot 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 your time starts now let's do this right this is my first one <laughs> um to be a warm fresh and complete me complete me Lovely. Was that two or three? Okay, that was number two, right? Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Take your time. all right so i have i have mentioned three things um oh, wonderful actually, wonderful and surprisingly they don't have to do with an with a with a courier package that arrived in your house today how is that ashwarya <laughs> <laughs> so spot on stuff 
material objects give us we can be grateful for them and we should be grateful for them but like i said we develop this sort of blindness we develop this sort of adaptation to it very quickly far longer a uh, source of joy and pleasure is experiences so between between buying like a fancy new phone and taking a weekend off the weekend off because you, every time you recall it it will bring you greater pleasure the phone you'll keep looking at it but you but it will not be able to and then then you'll you'll scratch it or you'll break your screen and then you you'll start cursing it and that very phone will start to hang after two months or something like that there'll be a bug in it and that phone will actually be the source of tremendous um anxiety or anger for you right um so so mine were sort of similar i guess we have similar priorities i was very grateful to my neighborhood electrician for coming um let me tell you he he actually he helped me figure out an entire wiring system of my neighbor so which reminded me that i was very grateful to my neighbor i have work going on on my roof and and the kind of sound that it creates is and it will it will rip through like your spinal and every single nerve in your body and my neighbor so sweetly gave me the keys to his house and he said go you can go and work there and my kids have exams and he said they can go there but his house didn't have a light so so you see how one and then i was so grateful that my kids were able to do their exams online in these very difficult times so sometimes one thought can also lead to another and and gratitude is not just sort of addictive but it is also um it also helps you create a sense of oneness right so now each time i see that electrician even if there's something that he does that makes me angry i'll always remember this sort of sense of oneness has come because he did he did something for me at a time of my need and i felt that gratitude i nourished that gratitude within me i nourished that gratitude for my neighbor and the next time i see him i'll feel a greater sense of oneness with him as well so there are there's a multitude of advantages and the sort of paid forward is is um, is it is quite real and it is very evidence based as well um with your permission ashwari I, i want to just talk about a few of the nitty gritties of the actual journey because we all have an idea of what it should be like but not quite sure how to do it besides the actual implements thank you for that um that we need which are very basic and i will say there are apps as well that you can use um sometimes we think oh it's going to be far less inferior to actually writing with a beautiful fountain pen in a gratitude journal life is not perfect far more important that you do it right regularity just clocking it in is the most important thing uh so for that i will say if there is anything that you should invest in please invest in like an alarm or a reminder on your phone a notification it is time to do your gratitude journaling <laughs> but also please invest in creating the accountability if you've struggled with it at change of habit is never going to be easy keep in mind your our little caveman brain is going to tell us please 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 will you stop thinking about all the good things let's sit down and think about our threats because that's what we need to be doing that is critical so to be able to shift is going to be hard and everything in your body and brain is going to tell you no this is not what we should be prioritizing but our our logical thinking brain our conscious brain is aware that that this is the person we want to become this is the well being we want to create and therefore we're going to have to make this initially that which is bitter in the beginning will become sweet at the end right so with that thought i will i will invite you to give it a try how often should you do it now this is something again that that the uh, the studies are mixed on their findings by and large Uh, neuroscientists say that look what works for you is the right regularity how you do it is the right regularity some i mean is the right way so so some people actually benefit from doing it every day at the same time some people are happy doing it once a week some people perhaps longer and there are different ways as well some people like to write a letter to the person that they want to show gratitude for some people just like to reflect on it initially we might feel suppose the the, the electrician if i want to say something to him next time like i was really grateful i might feel a little awkward initially as well so that awkwardness does come you don't have to go tremendously outside but i'll say in small ways try going outside your comfort zone see the benefit that it brings you you will actually get these hits of like dopamine and serotonin and and sense of well-being right which is which is really what we crave it's really the drug that we crave um every day 
right so sandhya you know uh, this uh, it said that it takes 21 days to actually turn um, any anything that you have picked up recently into a habit so you know even with gratitude journaling maybe um, one can start penning down their thoughts and gratitude say every day for at least 21 days and i think that would be very um, elemental in sort of you know creating a nice habit that's a that's a great idea ashwarya also it it brings in the rigor into it right but it also gives you a taste for what is working for you and what's not working for you so by all means in in these 21 days um try the different kinds of gratitude journaling see what works for you in terms of times of time of day it could be a very unorthodox time of day right it could just be a lunch break at work if if night time is too chaotic or you know we're netflixing like we're all guilty of doing these days and then we just crash out when we realize it's too late so so like i said an imperfect practice done regularly is far more powerful than trying to catch one perfect day of uh, journaling but but try it you just might like it definitely i i the time i think uh, now would be the perfect time to take up some questions um, absolutely as uh, asked please tell me how can we control our pessimism so we have this notion that that bad things need to be got rid of and only good things need to come into our life i think everything is a learning experience for us our emotions tell us so much about what's important to us and what we uh, what we value so so what causes us sadness what causes us anger tells us really a lot about ourselves so it's one thing to to acknowledge that to give awareness to that but also to not judge that but not to stay in that so yes your question is relevant in that in that yes do keep in mind also we are actually sort of wired for pessimism it's it's the pessimistic lines of people that that said okay i'm not going to take this risk i'm not going to take that risk and that's how they survived perhaps the more optimistic among us nothing is going to happen to us i'm going to go there go out there and see what happens those are probably the lineage that that sort of died out 10000 years ago so pessimism pessimism isn't all bad but but you're right staying in that place creates deep Uh, anxiety and happiness within us so definitely gratitude is one way of overturning it this doesn't happen overnight some it, like i said it's a 360 degree plan that you need to have to address all of the aspects sometimes we need to sort of rehabilitate our mind we need to understand why we think the way we do sometimes we need to actually address the the root of where our sadness or or if you're calling it pessimism comes from i i doubt that that everything is a negative to you uh, to the person who's asking the question if you actually scan actively there might be some moments in which you'll find yourself to be at least neutral if not happy you, the idea is to find those and feed those so there's a the it, it's like we have different seeds in us it's very much within your choice what seeds you choose to water and then the seeds that you don't want to encourage to grow rather than going after every single weed and pulling it out let's just sort of leave it it'll wither away on its own it's all a part of who you are and you know we accept the good with the bad so small steps every day small yes emotions are like a, a a small wave that you know uh that are passing by so sometimes you just have to allow it to subside absolutely um, sometimes it's a small wave sometimes it's a tsunami but also ashwarya like i said right at the beginning uh, we do have a center within us which is actually which is actually apart from the storm if you see sometimes if you catch if you can connect to our connect to our Okay. so sometimes you'll catch yourself you can actually see yourself acting outside like even if you're yelling at somebody sometimes you you'll get a sense that oh my god i can actually see myself like i'm outside my own body standing there watching myself yell so we have something within us some some philosophies call it the silent witness some people call it the soul some people call it the silent center some people call it interbeing but there is that sort of substratum of calm over which on around which all of this happens so just to be able to observe that yes this is a wave of sorrow that's hitting me right now it's the sorrow is happening to me it is my reaction to things it is not me right i'm 
somewhere that um if you and i and i just randomly remember it right now when you said that sometimes we are a witness to our own thing um it is said that if you have a very cruel boss you know always keep a mirror in front of you so whenever that boss comes around and yells at you <laughs> they can see themselves in the mirror <laughs> <laughs> totally totally i the other beautiful analogy the other one i use is every time you like point a finger at somebody else please know that three are pointing back at you the very often the things that we're frustrated about in our day uh, in our in our lives outside are all the things that we can't control but again all the things that are important to us so use your anger to see what's important to you if you're getting angry with the way people around you are being treated or if you're getting angry with the way things are being done do keep in mind that all we have control over to some extent is just our actions most people are helpless to behave the way they will behave and they're not doing it necessarily to make your life miserable they're mostly just centered around their own thoughts and emotions you're not even on their radar for most part so it's our choice how we want to jump into that storm or not but we can also use this moment to say hey listen what is this tell me about me what can i learn from this emotion so it's like saying that look this this emotion is causing me pain i can choose to either keep touching this needle and seeing oh is it going to hurt me is it going to hurt me yes it will or i can say okay you know let me find out what's on this needle why is it causing me pain i take my hand off it to stop and analyze and for that you need to get out of this default mode the sort of ruminative thinking and the gratitude the one one way to switch from that negative to the to the positive oh. is to actually stop and say okay hold on you know some, when when there's pain your brain is hyper focused on it it is one of the things that we need to do to survive right if there's a threat are you going to be looking at the beautiful scenery around no we are hyper focused on the threat so the gratitude helps us again go into that parasympathetic system the rest and digest saying that okay you know what this isn't life threatening this was just a, an angry boss there's plenty in my life that, and then you'll be able to find the solution but you need to do that as well right it, it's not just we're not just going to uh, eternally uh, gratitude journal we do need to use our thinking and we do need to build on all of this as well. and so Thank you so much sandhya for turning up and you know uh, addressing this topic for us teaching us to um, gratitude uh, teaching us uh, to express our gratitude in a more um, perfect way uh, or rather in a more constructive way um, and uh, thank you for teaching me personally um, how to be more centered and balanced It's, so, it's been my absolute pleasure. Thank you for giving me this opportunity. I hope that I've been able to share some very imperfect ways of of moving ahead. Right? If we we fail forward. So so there's absolutely no there's no compulsion on us to get it right. And I'm very much a work in progress myself. So uh, I'm just sharing my journey. And thank you for giving me this opportunity, Ashwarya. Thank you, Sandhya. Thank you so much. uh with this i would also like to thank our viewers today who joined us to all our loyal viewers thank you so much guys it was really really fun talking to you tomorrow is valentine's day i hope you have a great day loving yourself first so yeah happy and happy weekend ahead bye 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 guys